and a woman, woman, woman in every way. Yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Yeah, yeah. Are you in Welcome every to Every Way Woman. woman. There are some major changes happening in the talk show world. Welcome to Every Way Woman. So, from the Cosby's to the Housewives, I'm wondering if the image of women on television has changed for the better. Stacey, let's rewind to the women you grew up with. Wow, there was June Cleaver and mm -hmm. Harriet, and Ethel and Lucy, um, Claire Huxtable, kind of slip Roseanne in there. I've seen a few of these <laughs> reruns, but I mean, who are these women to you? Well, the first ones that I mentioned, they, you know, with Ozzie and Harriet, so June stayed at home, Harriet stayed at home, she took you, she was a homemaker. Then you had Lucy, she stayed at home. She caused a little trouble. Uh, she caused a little trouble. Yes. Ethel. Uh -huh. So they represented where women were portrayed in society at that time. That was the 60s. At the late, early to late 60s. Do you uh, think these were women that were role models? For the women of that time? I absolutely do. I think it was indicative of what was going on because if you forward fast now with the images that we're seeing with the housewives of Atlanta, oh, Beverly right. Hills, Westchester, it's all that madness of what's going on today. Yeah, well, my, my point of view of, of women g growing up is a little bit different, mm -hmm. mostly because my mom was um, Korean and she didn't really watch American um, shows or dramas. So I got I got my point of view from my father's shows. Mm -hmm. So a lot what of, were your father's shows? A lot shows. of the shows that I got were things like Lucy, right? Yeah, okay. Because it was funny. Yeah. Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett was, um, was another one. Um, and but then there was the Benny Hill show. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember the Benny Hill show, <laughs> but it was no. like you know it's an older it's a guy show, and every now and then he'd have a sexy party, and then the, all these women would come out in bikinis and be like. Ta -ta 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 and bounce her boobs and then go right back out. So these were the women you didn't want to be like. Right, yes. And so, but these were, but this was the images that I was getting right. and they they came from my father's point of view of what women were in media. Archie Bunker's wife. What was oh, her name? yes. Archie Bunker's wife. Yes. Yes. Don't look at me. Oh <laughs> right, yes, I can't remember her name. I can't name. remember her name. But she was so frail. Yes. And she had no opinion. Yes, <laughs> but those were the images because that's where women were. They were traditionally in the home. And I think we've seen an evolution. Right. Claire Hexable, when Claire Hexable came to the scene, she started a riot. Not a bad way, but you saw a woman. I don't necessarily want to say her race, but you saw a woman who was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Her husband was a doctor. They had six children, and she was like doing it all. And she really revolutionized women having it all in TV. Yes, in TV. In TV. In TV. <laughs> For sure. But okay, fast forward to where we are now. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's done? I think, it, but for, for me, what the evolution is, is that women are bored now. That's what it kind of looks like. When we have women the on real, TV are bored? Well, women, yeah, they're bored in general. You got the housewives of this and the housewives of that. They don't and, look bored on the TV. I mean, they're doing this, that, and the other, and this guy and this one. That, that's yeah, but, but they aren't, I don't know. I, and I, I, have to, I haven't watched too many of those shows. I, I, it's I not think, my thing. But I think what happens is it, it, it just continues to, like the house, let's use the, house, the reality. Mm. There's a lot of reality shows right now of MTV Real World and Survivor. 16 and pregnant. Six, you know, Teen oh Mom God. and yeah. um, Honey Boo Boo Child. And mm -hmm. So all oh these God. things that are referencing where we're, what we're showing to young women. Mm -hmm. Toddlers and Tierras you know, having those little girls with right. makeup on. So well, what was the show yeah. they used to have? The Jerry Springer Show. Yeah. Those shows are the Jerry Springer yeah. Show. Well, I think fun. there still is that show, by the way. Oh, and it it's just interesting, though, because all we see is anything and everything we want to see now. Right. I mean, from whatever is shown to us through scripted television mm -hmm. to the reality that America is craving. I mean, America loves right. reality television. Whether we like it or not, neither here nor yeah, there. The innocence of TV kind of has lost its way. Yeah. Well, right? do, you, do, you, do you think that's given a bad image to women? I do. I, I think it has. But the, the flip side to that is there are also some really great images as well. Absolutely. For sure. Yes. Look at, I mean, Bones. Emily Deschanel is a yeah. great character. She's a professional. Absolutely. She's a great mother. They're very mother. Intelligent. intelligent women out there who a are doing things. And they look different. They tend to look more realistic. Like all of us look. Ethnically Oprah. ambiguous. Yes. Oprah did a we wonderful will. thing for mm -hmm. women on TV. I mean, Oprah was another one of those. You have a lot of journalists that are women mm -hmm. on Fox and CNN. And you have... ESPN, so I think there's positive images and there are not so positive images on TV, but I think it's representative of where we are. Some people are a yeah. base and some people are doing really well. Hmm. Is there, 
<laughs> it's like, like there's yeah. an issue. <laughs> no, no, it's just something I'm really considering because I do think it's not that women are portrayed either better or worse than they were 50 years ago. It's just differently, and there's so many different mediums, internet, you know, Netflix, right. yeah. television, for these opportunities, whether it's reality or scripted, to create these characters of ourselves. TV if used you to will. be in black and white. That was the time. Now you have all these mediums. House, of, I mean, so it's just TV has evolved. But do you think? Child. But do you think it's yeah. overly sexualized women? Absolutely. They got people getting they busy on at eight o'clock at night. You would have never saw uh, yeah, that I growing know. up. No, that's right. The Benny Hill show didn't come on until ten. Yes, <laughs> but, but you got people full on. Yeah. You know, hi at eight o'clock. And I'm trying to have my son watch, uh, I don't know, Nickelodeon. I mean, how do we so, fight that? I mean, what can we as women do? Parent. 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 Do well, not allow well, them. Well, what do you mean parent? Because I don't have off. children. Yeah, parent you know, myself? Or go in and see what they're doing. We don't I, have TV iPad in can be someone's best friend when they need yes. uh, their child to be distracted. But can it be their worst enemy? Because they have access to so much, much information that's not age appropriate. We don't have a TV in our home. Right. Not at all. Oh, well, or we don't have a TV in our home. Heart or mind appropriate. <laughs> on that note, we'll be back with more television on Everyday Woman. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you in every way woman? Welcome back. So ladies, let's chat. Whether we like it or not, we're all playing a role of sorts. And Stacey, you seem to think it might have caused some sort of identity crisis for women. Yes, I've been, as I was sharing with you guys in the green room, I've been talking to a number of women and we have so many roles. I like my, amuse myself real quick. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm an executive, I'm a mentor, I'm a public uh, servant, I have a job, Super I'm a woman. teacher, I have, I mean, huh. a daughter, all those things. And in talking to women, Madison and Jess, and what they're saying to me is, I'm pissed off because I've been, my identity is caught up in being wife and mother and all those things and not celebrating who I am as a woman. And I think that happens. We put that we get caught up in everything that we do and mm -hmm. what we do does not define who we are and that's i think that's do you find yourself gonna... caught up in that madison no i don't okay. and sometimes i find comfort in the, in the, in it um i find comfort in knowing that i can identify myself with i am a mom okay and it makes me feel stronger but and it helps me to guide me and helps helps me make choices based on that role but, and based on that identity but to your point though madison can you though see that a person may feel that I am all these people, these mm -hmm. I'm these roles, but I'm not. That's not who I am. That's not Madison. That's not Madison. But Could I, you be hiding in those roles? But I feel like else? I feel like all those roles are an extension of who I am. That all of those roles make me who I am because I wouldn't be those roles if that's not who I wanted to be. So where someone might start feeling resentful about the roles that they're playing, well, they put. They're playing those roles for a reason. And they they put they don't have to continue to play that role. They can let go of that role at any time. Well, what's interesting though is role. I think that a, a lot of us are assumed that we are a certain role. You know, people mm -hmm. look at me, this tall blonde, and then they, you know, I have to play this role in their head. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of people thinking that I'm, you know, right. less intelligent or flaky or Hollywood or you're so LA. No, I'm so Jasmine Moye and there's a lot of more layers. Mm -hmm. That's the main role I'm right. playing beyond being a daughter, sister, friend, etc. I'm trying to play this role of what is my best self in fighting against what everybody else thinks well, about Well, it sounds me. like what you're fighting against is a stereotype. Oh, for sure. You Absolutely. have some, you fight stereotypes. Absolutely. But, but to your point, and you're correct, you're right. Those roles that I identify with myself are extension of who I am. Mm -hmm. But they are they don't define me because as we know roles change so the mother that I am today is not the mother I was when my babies were toddlers and not the mother I'm gonna be when I have grown right. children. Right, but you, you play those roles, but you also define what those roles mean. I, I do mm -hmm. But at the end of the day before I had all those titles I think what the women are saying to me states is before I have all those titles. I am a woman right but before they had all those titles they were kids <laughs> well, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with I, this? I see where you're going with this. How do you maintain that role of I am st 
JC. I am a woman. Or well, can you? I just got it. To be honest with you, I just <laughs> really got it. And I'm throwing some people for a loop because they're like, wow, Stace. Like, I didn't know. Right? And what do you that, mean? Wow, well, Stacey, to, I didn't know. It's to that point. Because I was hiding behind so many things. I hid behind being a great wife. I hid behind being a great mom. But how are you me. hiding then? Because to me, those don't sound like things you hide behind. Yes, those sound you, like oh, things most that definitely you, you can. What, if you don't deal with something that's going on with you, you will overcompensate and live vicariously through your children and your spouse. Or but those, now yeah, today, those roles. I don't have a problem saying, you know what? Mama is not cooking tonight. Everybody work for themselves. I'm going to sleep. But isn't that, that also home? being? Isn't that also being a great mom? Isn't it teaching them to go, hey, sometimes you have to take care of yourself first. And I'm doing it for me. I'm being the example for you. It I don't, could be. I don't know. No, if because if, if I, Madison, if I was very uncomfortable who I am, mm -hmm. and, I, and I was, so having my children, you know, know that I'm there, pick them up from school, making sure that I cook, making sure everything was in line was important to me because I was in chaos. And that's something that I could control. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm telling our viewers is, your roles are going to change. Your life is going to expand. Yeah, and, and that's when you okay. become in control with yourself, it's okay for a parent to say, you know what, I don't like my kid today. Well, it doesn't make you a bad mom. <laughs> no, but it doesn't you know, make you a bad mom. It makes you an honest, authentic Absolutely. person. It's interesting, too, because it's, I'm finally at a I've point in my moments. life, growing up, and, you know, at, nearing the end of my 20s, I'm finally being okay with that. I am not who I was when I was 21. I don't want the same things I wanted when I was 23. And those roles are changing. And... I have to be okay with that. Yes, they, yeah. they evolve. It's okay for me. I've been married almost 23 years, and today I'm uncomfortable with telling my husband, uh-uh, I'm cool, uh -uh, uh This is not working for me, right? Mm -hmm. I've evolved mm -hmm. because I'm comfortable with me, and I don't think that he's going to leave me, right? Right. I wouldn't say things before because I was uncomfortable. Oh, I shouldn't say that. A wife doesn't say that. No, a man that loves a woman, a woman loves a man. They're honest in their communication. Communication. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about as the roles evolve. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Live your role, lady. <laughs> we'll be back with more Everyway Woman. After this commercial break, more Everyway Woman. Are you an Everyway Woman? Here at Everyway Woman, we talk about everything including taboo health topics. Today, Dr. Sherry Thomas is gonna give us a little information about menopause, or as my mother told me, the change. <laughs> Do people still refer to it as the change? Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Tell me, what is the problem? Why do women have a difficult time accepting menopause? Well, it's not just the word menopause, it's the changes that go on in the physiology of our body. And one of the biggest problems is the problem of sleeping. Okay. So those personal summers, hot flashes, cause us to not sleep at night. And as a result, we have some personality changes. It causes us not to think well. Uh, women multitask all the time. Right. I mean, the first two weeks of our menstrual cycle, lots of <laughs> estrogen, lots of multitasking. And we do a good job at it, my ad. <laughs> but when we go through menopause, we don't produce as much estrogen, uh, so we don't multitask, but also then we don't sleep well. And that sleeping just really destroys our ability to have reserve and to think and to really deal with all those issues we deal with when we're having periods. So in addition to hot flashes, personal summers, and not sleeping, what are some of the other symptoms of menopause? Well, uh, drier skin, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the um, vaginal area, which mm -hmm. causes pain with sexual activity okay. um, or may cause more bladder infections. Osteoporosis. Uh, we also catch up with men with heart disease about 10 to 15 years later because of going through the change. And our body, just the physiology is that we just start aging a little faster. And as women, we just hate aging anyway. <laughs> so that, and so I think that's why women have such a negative connotation why? about menopause is like, now I'm really going to age. You know, I agree with that. I think that is why women do because you come to terms with I'm getting older and there's something about aging that just kind of messes with our psyche. But what are some of the health risks if I don't address this menopause to change aging? What are some of the health risks? Well, let's, let's back up to how we can go through menopause without okay. the health risks. And that is, let's start about taking good care of ourselves. Good. 
making sure Perfect. we see our physician every year, keep our cholesterol and blood pressure and glucose under mm -hmm. control, not smoking, exercise, eat well, and have a nice social life with our friends and our family. When we start going through menopause, there's a lot of things we can do without hormones. Mm -hmm. And we know estrogen will help the hot flashes, but how can we get through it? Well, let's keep our weight down. Let's cut down on the alcohol, uh, especially at night, because that will really increase the hot flashes. So you're saying a little nip at night is not good for the ladies? Oh, you know, a little <laughs> nip with dinner is fine, but a little nip before you're going to go to bed, oh, okay. it really heats you up and causes more hot flashes. We know that. Plus, to get rid of those hot flashes and let us sleep better, cool your body down. Take okay. a little little cool, not cold, mm -hmm. shower or go in the pool. Well, let me ask you this. As my doctor, um, you, you will help me through this process. Um, what, what should I be looking for or how would you help me if I come in and I say, ah, oh, I'm going through the change. How will you help me or how should I know that my doctor is my advocate through menopause? Well, I want to ask you symptoms I, and specifically which symptoms you're having. Hot flashes, problems thinking, problems concentrating, dry skin, pain with sexual activity. And then I want to ask you, how much is that bothering you? Okay. How much is that affecting your life? If you tell me, you know, I have a few hot flashes here mm -hmm. and there, but it's not a problem. I'll say, well, let's just see how you do, but let me know if it becomes worse. And if you say, I am so overwhelmed, that's why I'm here today, I'll say, let's talk about how we can change things. Now, what about premenopause? Because there's the notion that, you know, women later in age, but I know some people who are close to me that started their menopause or the change in their late 30s, early 40s, or even in their mid-30s. Yes, that happens. We call that premature ovarian failure. Our ovaries produce estrogen and release follicles at a time that's genetically predetermined. Basically, when our mother goes through the change, we will. But some women, their body doesn't pay attention to that. And so in their 20s, 30s, they just stop producing estrogen. And that is very significant okay. and very upsetting for them. Because we know as women between 45 and 55, we're going to go through the change. But when women start doing that at 25, first of all, it may take them a few doctors right. to really diagnose what's going on. No, it's not a thyroid problem. No, you're not having some infection. No, you are going through the change. And then we start treating it appropriately. Okay. Because I know you talked about some of the health risks by not going to the, to the doctor. So if, if I'm having those symptoms, um, what should I do tomorrow? <laughs> what should I do tomorrow? If I'm hot flashing or what should I do tomorrow? So if you're having hot flashes and you say, gee, I didn't sleep well, get a fan out, take a little cool shower, go, go swim the night before, don't drink the alcohol, not high spicy food, see how you get through the night. If you feel like the next day, oh, I'm still just wrung out, I'm miserable, I can't go to the meeting. Every time I sit through a meeting, I'm drenched. I just feel beat red and uncomfortable. Go see your doctor. The fastest, quickest way to get rid of hot flashes is taking estrogen. Okay. Well, hopefully a lot of people will be making doctor appointments today. Listen, ladies, in order to take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. If you're having a personal summer, feeling a little hot flash, or just not sleeping well, you could be starting the change. Stay tuned, Every Way Woman. We'll be right back. Stay with us for tomorrow's stars. Are you in Every Way Woman? Every Way Woman celebrates tomorrow's stars, and today we are welcoming, welcoming all the way from Chicago to Queen of Love, one of my favorite comedians. Come on in. Hi, it's so good to see you. Welcome good back. Good to see you. Mwah, mwah. Little love from the lab. You know, okay. you know how I do. Hello. How y'all doing today? Hey. Um, where are all, where are all my uh, people that have jobs. Clap if you have a job. Isn't it good to be employed, isn't it? Now I want to see who's going to be honest on a Sunday. Uh, clap if you steal from your job. <laughs> okay, everybody laughing. I want to clap. <laughs> Y'all, I feel like you can tell where people work at based on what they have a lot of in their house. <laughs> no. When I worked at McDonald's, we just had a refrigerator full of apple pies. <laughs> And then a garbage bag full of those little kids' meal toys. <laughs> then I worked at uh, FedEx Kinko's. And then we just had a, a 
different color resume paper just stacked up to the ceiling in the living room. <laughs> Y'all, when I became a nurse, I brought home travel size everything because I know the protocol, travel size lotion, travel size body wash. <laughs> I just brought the whole like welcome to the hospital kit home. <laughs> you know, the little patient belonging bag. But I feel like at that point when I became a nurse, the expectations changed on what, people, on what people thought I should bring home. You know, like what people expected me to bring home. My mama called me at work, y'all, talking about, baby, you know we having a fourth at my house. You know, everybody coming over. Mama needs you to bring a couple cases of flu shots home for the whole family. <laughs> you know, you, you could just set a table up and you could do your thing. I like, Mom, I'm not trying to lose my job. I have a career now. <laughs> well, you know they got a new strain now. I know y'all got the hookup. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> y'all, my uncle asked me to bring home methadone. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Uncle Jerry, you want heroin? Because <laughs> y'all know methadone is the drug you take to get off of heroin. And he like, dog, dee. <laughs> I'm trying to get off these cigarettes. <laughs> if methadone helped with heroin, imagine what it could do for nicotine. <laughs> I'm like, you got a point there. You got a point. <laughs> Y'all, I hate telling thugs that I'm a nurse. Because like thugs, they always want something extraordinary. Like I'm used to Vi people asking me for Vicodin and Molly's and all that. People ask me for that. But this one dude came up to me and he was like, hey, little mama. You think you could bring the brother the clear machine home? <laughs> and I'm like, the clear machine? The defibrillator? <laughs> He's like, yeah, in case I got to revive one of the homies. You know the ambulance don't come in our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, Ricky would have made it if they had the clear machine in, in that movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm Taquita Love. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. It's so good to see you. And we're going to definitely have you back on Every Way Woman to find out how you can... Uh, we're still laughing all over the place. Somebody's got to take this one out. Oh, my God. Uh, Every Way Woman gives back to the community to find out how you, too, can match our donations of undergarments for needy children. Go to everywaywoman.com. We'll see you next time. This has been an Every Way Woman production. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way. Yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Yeah, yeah. Are you in every way, woman? Are you in every way, woman?